Awesome, we're live. Okay, so I got these two red squirrels here. You guys will end up seeing the video tomorrow. I'm just gonna cook them up here. I got this grill thing going. So, just gotta throw some vegetable oil on because I'm all out of olive oil. So usually I would use a pretty complex recipe for cooking squirrel, but today I am just gonna use some crushed red pepper and cayenne pepper. Hey, Grandpa's Place, how's it going? Glad that you're tuning in, like, right away. That was awesome. Um, so this should already be pretty heated up here. Um, I'm going to have to find a place to set this up. Like, oh, boy. Um, okay. Cool. So... The two things that I did bring out here was cayenne pepper and crushed red pepper. So this is going to be some spicy red squirrel. Now, as you'll see on the plate here, there is all uh, everything that is here is a squirrel that I just got like probably 20 minutes ago, half hour ago. And then everything down here is the squirrel from the other day. And like I said, you guys will get that video tomorrow. Okay, so I'm just going to start throwing some squirrel bits on here. Let's grab our fork. Okay, I'm going to do this a lot quicker. I'm just going to... Kick the heat down. Oh boy. Okay. So now some crushed red pepper. Uh oh. That lid almost came off. That was almost really bad. And now for the cayenne pepper. Okay, so let me see if I can flip this around. Flip this way. Ooh. It's looking good. <laughs> this little tiny tenderloin here, I think it's already done. I'll pull that off in like two seconds. This is the breast here. Um, yeah, I do only have seven squirrel legs here instead of eight. Because the shot from yesterday was a vital shot and it kind of wrecked one of the shoulders. Um, these are both, I don't know if I already mentioned it, these are both red squirrels, so that's why there's not really a whole bunch of meat. The squirrels from my other videos though, the other gray squirrels that I had the headshots on, um, I think there were two like in a row. Those I actually froze, and I'm going to save those for when I do campouts or something. Okay, so, let's try this. Oh. Probably pick it up. Okay, we're gonna try the breast and the tender one at the same time because it's so small, it's barely like a quarter bite. So, mmm, that's good. Whew, that's spicy though. That is really spicy. So this is kind of nice. I didn't think I'd get to do a live stream until the weekend, but after getting the squirrel, I figured this is probably the perfect time. 
I mean, it's gonna be a fairly short live stream compared to some of the hunting ones. This is the first one I've gone into where the goal was not to hunt something. So this is nice. I plan to do a lot of live streams, um, all different kinds, bushcraft camps, whatnot. Possum with sweet potatoes. <laughs> I have not gotten a possum yet, and I really want to. I, I always think when I have scraps from a hunt or something, or even like cat food, like it would be really cool to put that out and see if I couldn't get some creatures of the night or something. Okay, so let's look at how this is doing. Because this, this heat was kind of kicked up before uh, I even threw the squirrel on. So uh, you can see it's kind of browning up nicely. Ooh. That looks really good. We'll take this piece off. Oh, good. I got plenty of tuna fish. Um, oh, for those of you that can't see, Grandpa's Place just commented that tuna fish is a really good bait for possum. Uh, oh. I'll definitely try using that. And we have skunks around here, too. And I, I already know how you're supposed to hunt skunk. Like, you don't want them to stink up everywhere. So. As we get into the colder nights here in Connecticut, I'll definitely be doing more night hunts. <clears throat> I also want to try a coyote hunt at some point. I have no idea if we have coyotes around here. I mean, I think I hear them. I think that I do. But it also could just be fox. I, I, I don't know what they sound like. I never bothered to really look it up. But when the time comes, I'll start scouting them. We have a game cam too. We rarely ever use it. We tried using it like once, I think, but my computer didn't take the, the software for it. So it's just sitting in a box now. So I got to find a way to use that, and then we will start using the trail cam also. Let's try this. This is, I want to say, a really small back strap. Wow. That is so tender. You know, when I threw these on, I wish that I separated. Um, the one that's been sitting in the fridge for three days and the one I just got. Just see if there's a difference. See here, this is another back strap. Check out my view while I get to cook this. This is so nice. I do plan to do some hunting in those woods right there also. Um, they're just, it's more thick, there's more briars, but as the winter sets in and we start getting some snow, um, everything will get kind of pushed down. It's a lot easier to navigate. That was another little back strap. Um, okay, I gotta go get a plate to take these legs off because this one had raw meat on it and I don't really want to put that on that. So I will be I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go grab a plate. Okay, got this plate. Now, and uh, these aren't done quite yet. These still have a little bit longer to cook. You can see, you can see some pink there. So like that's still gotta cook out. But this is browning up really nicely. Oh boy, come on, don't be stuck. That's my fault. Okay, well, I'm just going to eat that. It's like jerk squirrel.
Yeah, no, I'm usually pretty cautious of, you know, what raw meat has touched, what it hasn't, making sure my hands are always clean. It's definitely a concern. I, I've had food poisoning before. It wasn't from meat or anything. It was, God, it was probably almost 10 years ago. But I just remember it being the worst thing ever. Or, you know, one of the worst things that I've ever experienced. I gotta say though, I am enjoying the live streaming aspect of this channel. Like it's really cool to connect with you guys and I don't know, even read the comments after the live stream's already posted and people just watch it after. I mean, I, I don't know, I, I don't really like the fact that it has a bunch of just intermittent times where not much is really happening. Like this whole cooking part would be sped up to like 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds in a, like a, a kill and cook. And now you guys get to just experience it all. <laughs> no, I went fishing with Pat yesterday too. That was that was comical. I we caught absolutely nothing. Like there was absolutely nothing biting, nothing jumping. It was it was a weird day. It was cloudy out too. Ooh, check this out. Look at that beautiful brown. My god. I find that when I put, and I'm sure I've mentioned this in videos before, but I find when I put crushed red pepper into any kind of oil, it tends to, like, I don't know what the term is. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on this word. It, I don't know. It just, it, it like, ah, oh crap. <laughs> I have no, it, it, oh, it infuses. It infuses in the oil. That's what it is. Infuses. Okay. And it, it gives the oil like a reddish tint. So whenever you cook something in it, it really browns it almost to like a reddish color. I'm sure some of these smaller legs are done. It's just these two bigger ones here I'm trying to keep on. Whoa, whoa. That was close. Okay, I'm just gonna pull these smaller legs off and see if they're done. I assume they kind of are. Yeah, that look, that's pretty well cooked all the way through. Awesome. Mm, I still see pink on the bottom of that. If there's ever a late night to that I go night catfishing and I get something, I'm going to live stream me cooking it at like 1 in the morning. I don't even care. That'll be awesome. Late night live streams with Ben. <laughs> so, this is just finishing up here. Putting the last browning touches on this. I love the way that the crushed red pepper really sticks to this. 
I mean, it's also all over here, but especially this one. I think that these are probably just about done. I mean, they, they gotta be. They're so small. It's already been 15 minutes, jeez. Okay, let's get this one off. Might open it up, let me just see. That looks, um, okay, that's kind of concerning. Oh, that's crushed red pepper. Wow. Okay, wow, I almost got freaked out. I thought I saw blood in there. It's just crushed red pepper. That was almost really dumb. Okay, this one's got to be done. This one's done. Last one, there's still just a little bit of pink, like right there. This is what I got. I already ate all the boneless stuff for anyone just tuning in. All two people. I guess that's a sign, keep it on for another second or two. Okay, let's get this off. Okay, so now let's eat these squirrel legs. These look fantastic. This is, I think, a back leg. Yeah, this has got to be a back leg. Probably of the squirrel from yesterday. I don't say that because it's a little bit smaller. Mm. Check this out. Oh boy, is that camera going to focus? Um, okay. Squirrel calves are funny to me. They're so small. It's like a little ball of meat. Like, and they're really tender. There's almost nothing better than getting to eat your kill like right away. This is this is really good. Mm. It is very good. And the thing is with squirrel, you got to be careful not to overcook it because then it just gets really rubbery and kind of gross. I mean, like I'd imagine most meats do, but. I've overcooked squirrel, and I think I've overcooked rabbit once, and I won't do that again.
This is incredible. Like, there's a huge difference between cooking the squirrel out here on the grill and cooking it inside on the stove. And, I mean, it's like it's an upgrade to go from the stove to the grill, but then from the grill to cooking over a fire is like night and day. Like, it's not even close. Don't worry. Once it starts getting a little bit colder, I'll be doing some campouts. I'll have some squirrel catch and cook campouts. Hopefully get into some trapping. It'll be good. Uh, well, I only have a couple of legs here left to finish up, so I guess I'll end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this little cooking video and seeing me try it. This definitely turned out really good, especially because, like, it's a live stream. I can't, you know, I can't fix anything or change anything, so you guys saw it for what it is. Just basic cooking. It's turned out fantastic. You have a great day, too, Grandpa's Place, and everyone else who watches this, I hope you guys have a great day. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.